Welcome to another video. This time we're going to start off our collection of videos about different hardware debuggers, their features and how to get them set up for use in Visual Studio with Visual Micro. This time we're going to take a look at the competitively priced CJMCU FT2232 based debugger which can be found for around 5 to 10 US dollars online from a variety of retailers and auction sites. This is compatible with the standard 0.1 inch or 2.54 millimeter pin spacing, so you can use your existing jumper leads to connect it to most boards easily without any additional breakouts or converters. It also makes it very simple to build your own breakout connections to a standard ribbon cable if you're swapping between a variety of target boards and debuggers often. So like all hardware debuggers, there are limitations on the number of concurrent breakpoints which can be set and we believe for this probe the maximum limit is six breaks and four watch points but there are often further limitations within the target hardware itself for example the ESP32 only allows two concurrent hardware breakpoints it can be used to debug a variety of different boards as it supports both JTAG and SWD protocols for debugging and programming so you can use it for a variety of common Arduino platforms including Embed, STM and ESP32 so whether you're using your Nano BLE or STM32 or ASP32 board with a single piece of hardware, you can program and debug your project with simple option selections in Visual Micro. As this is a dual port chip, the probe also has a second interface available, which you can run your serial lines through, meaning all connections from your board can run through the probe itself, including a 3.3 volt supply to the target board if needed. The connection diagrams are available for a variety of boards on our website, links in the description, and a few of them are shown here. If you're powering your board through its own USB connection, you don't normally connect the power line between the probe and the board, as this will also supply power to your board with this debugger. However, if there's not enough power for your board to run this way, then disconnect the VCC line between the board and the probe and just power your board from the standard USB or VCC connection that it has. Ensure you always leave the ground line connected between the boards. So now you've got your board and debugger wired up, we can get this working in Visual Studio using Visual Micro. So to allow the debugging software to locate and control the probe, we'll need to alter the default driver installed in Windows for this device. So connect the probe to your machine through the USB and then install the Zdig tool which is available in the description. Once the Zdig tool is loaded you can simply click options and list all devices and then select interface 0 of your device and then select the Win USB driver for installation. Click install and wait for the process to finish and this can take a few minutes. Note, we don't need to change the driver on interface 1, as this is the serial pass-through port, and the driver that it has is fine as it is. Remember, if you do move the USB port that connects your debugging probe to your PC, you may need to reinstall the driver using Zdig. So now that's done, we can close Zdig down. So now we can load our sketch as normal in Visual Micro and select our board and as normal. So to set up the debugging, simply select Debug Hardware and the FT2232 Dual RS232 option from the drop-down list. If you want to use this as a programmer as well, instead of the USB port, select the option from the vMicro Upload Hardware Programmer option and this will allow the upload to happen through the JTAG or SWD interface instead of through the normal serial port on the board. If you've also connected the serial wiring through the probe as well, you can select the alternate COM port in Visual Micro so that you've got your serial input and output available. So now if we set a breakpoint in your sketch to stop at and amend any settings you want to make it a trace point, then we can continue. So you can't use conditional breakpoints in the hardware debugging system as these are not available, however they are available in the Visual Micro Serial Debugger with many other features including charting and more. So if you see the video in the top right and also at the end you can learn more about how to navigate and harness the power of the hardware debugger and its breakpoints. So we can either perform the build and upload as normal, 
So if you run debug and attach to process, you enter the you enter your program where it's currently executing on the chip. Useful when you want to jump into a project once it's gone wrong. Alternatively, you can run debug and start debugging, which will perform the build, the upload, and attach the debugger at the start of the program all in one click. If your setup doesn't work as expected at this point, please see our hardware debugging troubleshooting video in the top right as this guides you through resolving common issues. Once the debugging session has started, you can inspect variables, move and reconfigure your breakpoints and trace points, and navigate your code at runtime. Just to note, the optimization is set to default in this case, and this is already optimized for debugging when you have the hardware debugger enabled. However, you may need to also alter this to no optimization for projects and libraries to inspect certain variables or library code. No optimization may work, however, this can greatly increase the size of the program so it may not fit on your chip, and some calls do not actually compile correctly with zero optimization. Let us know in the comments if this was a useful video and if there's any other details or features we need to add to this collection of videos that you need. Don't forget to check out the other videos on our channel and give us a like and subscribe to stay up to date with more videos.